You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. This episode is brought to you by MissArtastic.com. If you're a teacher or art educator, you can find ideas, tips, advice, and art resources for art education at MissArtastic.com. Find the link in the description or go to MissArtastic.com now. Hi there, I'm Kathleen McGivern and I'm Miss Artastic and I'm going to be talking a little bit about teaching the elements of art to kids. So, here we go. Uh, so we're going to dive into teaching the elements of art to kids. So teaching the elements of art to elementary school children can be a very rewarding and challenging experience uh, for educators. Uh, the elements of art really are just building blocks that form the foundation of visual arts. These elements include line and shape, form, texture, space, value and color. Understanding and mastering these elements can help children um, create beautiful and meaningful art. In this article and in this episode, we're going to be talking about the best strategies for the elements of art and I'm going to be providing some unique ideas to inspire and engage young artists. So here we go teaching the elements of art to kids in your classroom. So teaching the elements of art is literally like one of my favorite things, but I try to use it as a vessel for exploring and diving deep into themes as well. So instead of just focusing on one thing, I try to develop art units that explore more to hit the art curriculum, take students on a deep dive adventure and insert art into all the things, right? We want to kind of take them on this deep adventure into art exploration and into a theme or into the elements. So basically that way they can just see how it all comes together and works together. It's not just, you know, line and just this and that, right? These are all different things that come together and work together to create art. And that just really takes a lot of stress off my back. So when you plan more, or units that cover more, you're actually planning and teaching a lot less art lessons, which means you can spend more time on the topic um, that you're exploring really with your students and then just let them have more time to create those artworks. I know a lot of time teachers are like, oh, I don't have a lot of time, I don't have time, it's a time management thing. So instead of trying to do all the things and throw all the spaghetti at the wall, we're just gonna take it back, teach, teach less, art projects, but more content, right? We're going to fully load them and dive deep into each one so that they co- each individual project covers more content, curricular content, but you're actually teaching less uh, art projects, which means you're less grading, you have less lesson plans, like they're going to be longer, obviously, right? But they're going to, you're going to have less in other ways, which is going to free you up some time. And then you can also spend more time on it with the kids instead of having that pressure on them and then they get anxiety and you get anxiety. It's all very stressful for everybody. So we're just slowing down essentially and teaching more while teaching less. And that's how we can save some time when it's very, very busy. And I know that. So basically just, yeah, letting them, instead of rushing and rushing and rushing through every single project and forcing it down, you know, the pipeline, you're just focusing more on one Because in reality, the whole rushing process through all the different art projects is just a recipe for art teacher burnout. And oh, do I know them feels. And I'm sure you do too, right? So why teaching the elements of art is important. So the elements of art are essential for kids to understand as developing artists because they give them the tools that they need to create their own design and compositions down the line, right? We want them to be able to create their own artworks, right? but we need to give them the tools to do that. So here are five reasons why teaching the elements of art to kids is important. So number one, understanding the elements of art helps kids develop their artistic skills. So the elements of art, such as color, line, shape, texture, and form, 
are the basic building blocks of visual art. And by teaching kids about these elements, our teachers can help them develop a strong foundation in art making and enable them to create more sophisticated and effective artworks. Number two, it helps kids develop their visual literacy. So in our highly visual world, it's important for kids to be able to read images, right? So I'm writing it like read, because we're not at, we're not reading words, but we are reading a visual language, right? Artists are creating and communicating through a visual means. We're not, it's a different type of communication, right? And it's essential and it's part of the human experience. So we're talking about reading in that sense, right? The visual language and visual literacy and understanding that and how it's communicated in art and design. Um, and by teaching the elements of art, art teachers can help kids develop their visual literacy and also their critical thinking skills, which we know is so essential. Number three, it encourages creativity and experimentation. So by teaching kids about the elements of art, art teachers can inspire them to experiment um, with different techniques, right, and materials and encourage them to be creative in their art making. So understanding the elements of art can really help kids uh, see the possibilities of what they can create. Number four! Woo! <laughs> it helps kids, I gotta make sure you're awake, so that's why I'm adding that in there. I know, I know, I'm changing it up on you because I know, oh, we got distracted, there's the phone, what? Be flying in my, I don't know, I don't know, but you got distracted, I know. I know, you're, I know you're scrolling TikTok. Come back to me, my friend, come back. All right, so number four, it helps, I'm a teacher too, right? <laughs> I got this. It helps kids appreciate and understand art. So when kids learn about the elements of art, they can begin to appreciate and understand the art they see in museums and galleries and in their everyday lives, right? Like design is everywhere and all that media on these devices is all visual, literacy, language, getting you to buy all those things. I know you're scrolling down Instagram or Facebook, you hit an ad, and you're like, wow. But do you know that some of those people are using certain colors to attract your attention, right? Like there's, there's just like a whole bunch of different things that really, I mean, that's part of visual literacy and like understanding that. Like, it's like if a kid goes into becoming a content creator down the road, like, hey, like this is part of that or whatever. A billion jobs. There's so many jobs that require being visually literate and understanding art. It doesn't matter what you do. It could be an interior designer or whatever, uh, book editor. You're going to need these skills. It also provides, um, but yeah, sorry, uh, back to the one is that just using it in their everyday lives, um, they can start to recognize how different artists use the elements of art to create different effects and meanings in their artworks. And number five, drop the mic. It provides a common language for art making. So the elements of art really provide a common language for artists to communicate with each other. So by teaching kids about these elements, our teachers can really help them develop the vocabulary and concepts they need to talk about their own art and understand the art of others. So this can really help kids feel more confident uh, in their art making and more connected to the wider art world. All right, next is strategies for teaching the elements of art. So what, number one is just to start with the basics. So before diving into the elements of art, it's really important to teach children the basics of art, such as how to hold a pencil, obviously, how to draw basic shapes. And we're talking, we're bringing it right down to the basics. These are lower level or unless the child's individual skills are at that level, right? We're teaching the individual, not the grade at a lot of time, right? So, and then how to mix colors. Uh, this will help children build their skills and confidence before moving on to more complex concepts, right? Start with the basics, like what kind of lines are there? What kind of shapes are there? And, and then make scaffold that for the appropriate age with that basic level would be for that grade group. And then you expand on it. So then number two is to use hands-on activities. So kids really learn best through hands-on activities. 
So incorporating and really meeting all the different senses. So incorporating our projects into your lessons is essential. Provide kids with various materials such as paper and paint and crayons and markers and encourage them to experiment with the elements of art. And I'm a big believer in using sustainability as a vessel for you know exploring art. You don't need to go buy all the things. If you can have, you know, reincorporate recycled mediums into your classroom, that's gonna save you money, it's gonna save you shopping time, and it's gonna also teach kids about sustainability. A lot of artists use found objects in their artworks or reuse materials. I don't go buy everything. You gotta no way, it's not even a realistic practice, right? We reuse, be sustainable, and teach that. Number three is to incorporate technology. So children today are digital natives. So incorporating technology into your lessons can really help them stay engaged, right? There are many apps and websites that allow kids to create art online, uh, such as Art for Kids Hub, right? There's the Miserastic YouTube channel, a lot of free videos on there. Uh, Kids Picks is still around. I loved Kids Picks um, as a kid, and that was like <laughs> the floppy disk era. <laughs> so hopefully it's better than that. Um, but I liked it back then, so I'm sure it's still great. And then Text Paint, but there's like Google Paint now. There's all kinds of things that you can do, like, and you know, it is for the basic level, like. But there's like a lot of tablets and stuff like that. A lot of devices have a lot of free awesome stuff i know like i use if you're teaching like middle school upper elementary high school like uh krita k-r-i-t-a is a free program open open source program um that's what i used to do on my drawing and graphics uh i use a wacom tablet and then i i do that on there super and it's free it's like a it's like an intense amazing program and they do it for free. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Super awesome. So I look at that too. Um, number four is to use visual aids. So visual aids such as posters and slideshows and videos. Um, if you're an Artastic Collective member, which opens, of course, in ju well, in August, first week of August, I open up the Artastic Collective art curriculum. You can find that at www.artasticcollective.com. But anyways, I open that up and there's videos in there you can play in your classroom that helps, you know, just reinforce and helps kids understand better the elements of art uh, and then these all these aids that you create they really show children how different artists use the elements of art into their work and how they can incorporate these elements into their own number five is to use real life examples so children can better understand the elements of art when they see them in real life examples so take kids on nature walks or around your urban areas Right, there's still nature in urban areas. Um, and then, or just even looking at the architecture in urban areas, right? Like if you teach in an urban setting versus a suburban or rural, like there are still lots of interesting shapes, right? You're gonna have more geometric shapes because it's more man-made, you can talk about that. And then have the contrast between the uh, organic shapes that might be found that are growing also in the urban environment. Anyways, you can go on a whole different thing with that, right? And you do like live sketching and still life drawings and plein air painting, all kinds of things you can make out of, out of just that lesson, right? But basically you can just point out, you know, the different shapes and the colors they see in the environment and show chill, you know, like you can observe light sources and shadows and how they create value. Um, and then observe, you can even show children examples of textures, right? such as rough tree barks or smooth river rocks or the texture of brick on buildings, for example, if you're in, in an urban environment. So you can really point out the elements of art in a, in a walkabout. Number six is to encourage experimentation. So you can encourage children to experiment with different art materials and techniques and provide children with different types of like paper and paint and other me mediums and materials I uh, just really to see how the elements of art can be used in different ways. Um, super awesome. Number seven is to whoa, <laughs> incorporate art history. So teaching art history can really help children understand how the elements of art have been used throughout history. So you can show children examples of famous artists such as Leonardo da Vinci or Vincent van Gogh or Pablo Picasso or Frida Kahlo but preview for you to Calo first, depending on the age you teach. <laughs> Let's be real. And, and anybody, you know, like, mo 
actually lots of people most of them you're gonna need to preview before you teach them but and uh it depends on where you work as well and the age and then just talk about how they use the elements of art in their work number eight is to teach art vocabulary so teaching art to uh, vocabulary to kids can really help them better understand the elements of art. So some important terms to teach are like line, you can talk about what shape is and form, value, texture, color, and then dive deep in what those really mean and deconstruct them. Number nine is to give constructive feedback. So giving constructive feedback can really help kids improve their art skills, encouraging them to share their work, uh, give feedback on how they can improve, and remember to always focus on the positive aspects of their work and encourage that more instead of bringing them down, breaking them down with the negative, right? So encourage more of, I really like, for example, I really like when you do blah, blah, blah. I would love to see more of that, right? So encouraging those areas versus being like, ah, blah, 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 blah and then crush your souls. Number 10, make it fun. So more importantly, make teaching the elements of art fun, right? Include games. I love having challenges and rewards or like scavenger hunts. Like you just make some task cards and just hide them about the room. They gotta go find their assignment that way. And then what to do next by looking for it. It just gets them really amped up. So, and then, and then rewards just to keep the kids in, excited, engaged, and creating art. So some unique ideas for teaching elements of art. So one, collaborative art projects. Collaborative art projects can be fun and a unique way to teach the elements of art. So divide your kids, your class up to into groups and then have each group work on a different element of art, for example. So for example, one group can be working on creating a textured collage maybe. Another group is working on creating some sort of color wheel infused design. Um, one, once each group has completed their project, bring all the pieces together to create a collaborative art piece that incorporates all the elements of art. Number two, art games. So art games can be a really fun way to teach kids about the elements of art. So for example, you can play a game where kids have to draw a picture only using one element of art, such as line or color. You can also play a game where kids have to identify different elements of art in famous artworks or even in their own artworks or their classmates. Number three is to do some nature art. So using nature as inspiration can be a unique and creative way to teach the elements of art. Again, take the kids on a nature walk, urban walk, and have them collect different natural materials such as leaves and sticks and rocks. Um, and then encourage kids to use these to create art or sketch still lifes of them if you don't want to collect and incorporate different elements of texture and shape and color. Number four is art journaling. So art journaling is an amazing way for kids to explore their creativity with a, while also learning about the elements of art. So provide kids with a journal or a sketchbook that and encourage them to create art that incorporates different uh, elements of art. You can also encourage kids to write about their artwork and how they used the different elements in their creations. Number five is shadow drawing. So shadow drawing is a really fun and unique way to teach kids about the elements of art, um, elements of art form. So set up a still life with various objects and then shine a light on it to like create some interesting shadows and stuff. And then you can have kids draw the still life, um, paying close attention to the different forms and shapes created by the highlights, the light source and the shadows. So you got your, you can really talk about all the different elements of a still life with that. Number six, I super love this one. It is artists, artists, Oh man, I totally scrolled too far. Artist trading cards. Oh my goodness. There we go. Artist trading cards uh, are, are essentially small pieces of art that are traded between artists. Now, if you don't want to go and make trading card templates or that, just do post it note art as well. You can just do that. Like, oh, art on a post it note. This can really be a fun and unique way to teach kids about the different elements of art and encourage children to create their own artist trading cards that incorporate different elements of art, such as color or line and texture. 
then you can have uh, all the kids trade their cards with their classmates to create a unique collection of art. Number seven is an art walk. So you can organize an art walk for your class where kids can showcase their art that incorporates the different elements of art. So you can set up different stations where kids can display their art and explain how to you how they use the different elements of art in their creations. And this can be a fun and interactive way for kids to showcase their creativity and learn from their classmates. Next is to get to know, get to know the elements of art. So the elements of art are the basic components that artists use to create visual works of art. They are the building blocks of art and include line, shape, form, value, color, texture, and space. Each element has its own unique characteristics and can be used in different ways to create a wide range of effects and styles. Line is the most basic element of art and is the foundation of all other elements. It can be defined as a continuous mark made on a surface with a pointed tool, such as a pen or pencil. And lines can be straight, curved, thick or thin, or broken even. And they can be to, used to create a sense of mood, direction, or uh, even movement. Shape is the second element of art. Uh, shape refers to the two-dimensional area that is defined by a boundary such as line or color. And shapes can be geometric or organic and can be used to create patterns and visual interest in a composition. Form refers to the three-dimensional object that has volume and occupies space. Form can be geometric or organic, same as shape, and can be used, uh, sorry, can be created through the use of light and shadow and texture and perspective, or it's an actual form, such as in sculpture. Next, number four is value. So value refers to the lightness or darkness of a color or tone, and it can be used to create contrast and depth in a composition and can be manipulated to create a sense of mood and atmosphere. Number five is color. Color is one of the most expressive elements of art uh, and it can be used to evoke emotions and visual interest. Colors can be warm or cool, bright or muted, and can be used to create harmony or contrast in a composition. Six is texture. So texture refers to the surface quality of an object such as smooth or rough. It can be created through the use of different materials or techniques and can be used to create visual interest in, and depth in a composition. And number seven is space, which refers to the area around and between objects and in a smaller composition, sorry, in a composition, not smaller. Take that out, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just gonna re-say it, let's just try again. Space refers to the area around and between objects in a composition. It can be used to create a sense of depth and perspective and can be manipulated to create a sense of movement and direction. By understanding the elements of art, it is Understanding the elements of art is crucial for creating successful works of art and by mastering these basic components, artists can create dynamic and expressive compositions that engage and inspire viewers. Next is to teach great specific elements of art units. So I think one of the most important things is to target your instruction by making it grade specific. Not only will this ensure that there's no overlap if you teach the same kids over the years, but it's also going to allow you to target the unique curricular content that you need to meet for each individual grade. Moreover, I like to increase engagement by adding theme into the unit, making it a unit that teaches the elements of art, but also incorporates a theme. This way your students are diving deep into two things to strengthen their learning and understanding. Teaching grade specific units of art for the elements of art is important for several reasons. First and foremost, it allows students to develop a strong foundation in the basic components of visual art. By focusing on each element of art individually, students can learn to identify and apply them in their own 
work, which can lead to greater creativity and artistic expression. In addition, grade specific units can help kids build important skills that are essential for success in other areas of life. Uh, for example, studying the elements of art can help students develop critical thinking skills as they learn to analyze and develop um, and evaluate sorry, different visual compositions. So it can also help students develop problem solving skills as they learn to experiment with different materials and techniques to achieve their artistic goals. Another benefit of teaching grade specific art units is that it allows for more structured and comprehensive approaches to art education. By focusing on element, each element in depth, um, teachers can ensure that students have a strong understanding of the key concepts and techniques associated with, one, with each one. And this can help students feel more confident in their ability to create art and can encourage them to explore their uh, their own artworks in more more fully and creatively finally teaching grade specific art units can help students develop a greater appreciation for the value and importance of visual art by learning about the history and significance of of different artists um students can really just gain a deeper understanding of how art reflects and shapes the world around us, which can inspire students to develop their own artistic voice and engage with the arts in a more meaningful way. In my Teachers Pay Teachers store, I have a lot of grade specific art units, so you can check that out at the Misartastic TPT store by searching Misartastic on TeachersPayTeachers.com or you can hit the links in my show notes on my blog. Um, in general, in conclusion, really, teaching the elements of art to elementary school children can be a fun and rewarding experience for art educators or educators in general. And by using hands-on activities, incorporating technology, and encouraging experimentation, children can learn how to master the elements of art and create beautiful, meaningful artworks. By incorporating unique ideas such as collaborative art projects, nature art, and artist trading cards, uh, educators can really make sure that they keep kids engaged and excited about creating art. So remember to always make the teaching of the elements of art fun and inspiring for artists. And my friend, that is it for this episode. So please make sure that you give this uh, a warm like. Yeah. And I am Ms. Artastic and I am peacing out and I will see you in the next episode.